The word of God will be coming your way shortly. We believe this word will be able to turn your life around for the better. Please be kind enough to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Tonight's teaching is for someone who is tired of his current level. Tonight's teaching is for someone who knows that there is a greater experience in life and destiny. Tonight's teaching is for someone who is determined to fight stagnation in his life. Tonight's teaching is for someone who has vowed that the year will not end for you the way it started. If you are that person, I want you to shout a loud Amen. Tonight's teaching is for a family that wants to end confusion once and for all in their lives. And for men and women who are desperate, you are saying, Lord, you have to crown my year with goodness and with mercies. Tonight is for someone who is tired of shame, tired of reproach, and you are saying there has to be a way out. My life must reveal the glory of God. If that is you, one more time, shout Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord put it in my heart to teach um, on a subject that I believe affects everyone, every one believer. There are teachings that may not necessarily affect everyone, but there are certain teachings where you never plateau as far as having a thorough understanding is concerned. There is always room for growth. And there is always room to rise to higher dimensions. Tonight is one of those teachings. And the Lord will grant us grace in Jesus name. I'm teaching on the topic. The Lord is my shepherd. Please write it down. Write it down. Clap but write it down. We have a lot of work to do. I want to show you by the integrity of scripture. How God leads men. How men are able to end seasons of stagnation. How men are able to end seasons of confusion in their lives by accessing the leadings of God. Hallelujah. For someone, God sent you to church tonight because he has vowed that you must go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by all means, I speak to you as touching this grace. You must make progress. You must go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. One more scripture, Job 8 and verse 7. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. The Bible says, though thy beginning was small, it says, yet thy later end should greatly increase. So clearly we see in scripture that there are no limits for the believer in Christ. As far as actualizing destiny is concerned, revealing the glory of God and bearing fruits, there is no limit for the believer. The Bible is also clear as to the fact that God is glorified when we make progress. God is glorified when we advance. And God is glorified when we maximize destiny. In John chapter 15. John 15 from verse 8. Then we go to verse 16. It says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So the Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Go to verse 16. It says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. So God is glorified when we advance. God is glorified when we make progress in life. In all of its dimensions, God is glorified when we maximize destiny. In Ephesians chapter 3, when you read from verse 10, 3, 10 Ephesians, it says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church 
the manifold wisdom of God. So it is not angels that will reveal the multifaceted wisdom of God. It is the church manifesting in her glory that reveals the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. The subject of stagnation and limitation is one that everyone dreads. I do not know anyone who embraces the idea of being limited or stagnated in life. Um, we all want to make progress and to the degree to which we make progress, we find fulfillment. In fact, psychologists would tell us that one of the clear indices that measure fulfillment is a sense of progress. That every time you find yourself in a sense of limitation, retrogression, and then worst of them, stagnation. It is able to dry up the spirit to a point where an individual even gives up. There are people today committing suicide. There are people today in hospitals depressed because they do not think that there is much to their lives again. They have done everything they know to do and exhausted all their options as far as making progress is concerned. I am convinced that no matter how confused, everyone is sincerely doing what they know to do as far as making progress is concerned. Tonight, God is going to grant us grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 is a very interesting psalm. This is the psalm of David. And most of his psalms were his contemplations will begin our reading from verse 1. The psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd. And as a result, I shall not want. There are many things the Bible tells us that the Lord is. For instance, the Bible says He is our ever-present help in time of need. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run to it and be saved. And all of the dimensions of God's names. Remember, I have taught you here that God is multidimensional in his operations. Are we together? That what one dimension will do is not what the other will do. So here the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, I shall not want. Let's read it down to six and then I'll begin to teach. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Verse 3 says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me again in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Your leadership is my security, even at times of uncertainty. It says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Verse 6 now. Surely, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. So the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, when you find me making progress, triumphing from one level of grace to the other, it is not because I know so much. It is not because I am invincible to all the impediments that stop men from making progress. But that among the many things I have found God to be, I have discovered that he can be shepherd. This talks about his leadership. There are many reasons why people fail in life. There are many reasons why people are stagnated in life. In fact, I looked up the word stagnation while preparing my notes for this sermon. And um, I wrote down a few things here just to put our minds on the same page. Write the word stagnation. The word stagnation has many meanings, but I coined out a few that I thought would give us um, light and understanding even as we proceed. I wrote down here that stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement. Please write. Stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress. Stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress. 
Stagnation also means a state of inactivity. A state of inactivity. Having life but without motion. Very terrible description. Having life but without motion. So one more time, stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress. A state of inactivity. Having life but with no motion. Hallelujah. This arguably is about the number one reason why people do not make progress in life. People are in that state of inactivity. And there are many factors. Number one is ignorance. Ignorance is biblically the first reason why people do not move. Because knowledge is represented in light. And you are only able to move to the degree to which you see. So ignorance. Number two, we have demonic activities. Hallelujah. Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. He said, but Satan hindered us. So we know that demon spirits can hinder the advancement and the progress of people. But the third reason, which is my concern for tonight, is the absence of divine direction, the leadings of God. The inability to access the leadings of God is arguably about the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest explanation for the helpless stagnation of many. No matter what kind of vision you have, no matter what kind of great destiny you have before you, the inability to access and to understand the leadings of God per time, per season, per moment, may keep you stagnated for a very very long time and may tonight be a service of deliverance for someone in the name of jesus christ i'm praying for you that through my speakings god is going to be speaking expressly to you maybe to a man of god maybe to a couple maybe to a family maybe to someone you just came at this point in your life you don't even know if to go left or to go right or to remain there you are not even sure of what to do may you find direction tonight in the name of jesus christ so i want you to pay attention write this down please to fulfill your assignment and your divine destiny to fulfill your assignment and your divine destiny you need to be guided and led by god to fulfill your divine assignment or your assignment and your divine destiny, you need to be guided and led by God. It is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, to actualize destiny to God's standard and God's specification outside of access to His guidance and His leading. Those we call great in the kingdom today are not great based on anything necessarily that they have within themselves. They may be very weak people who have mastered the art of accessing the leadings of God. And they triumph from one level of results even to the other. Why do we need the leadings of God even at such a time as this? Confusion is part of the limitations in all men confusion write that word down please confusion is part of the limitations in all men provided you are a man carrying flesh and blood and bones confusion is part of the limitations of all men it's not an insult it's an attempt to describe a state of man outside of the assistance of god I said to fulfill your divine destiny and your assignment, you will need to access the guidance and the leadings of God. And then that confusion is part of the limitations in all men. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Very, very important. You see, in life, please look up. Let me have your attention. I wrote down here that our decisions in life 
are usually based on the information we have and our current levels of exposure. This is a fact with all men. Decisions decide destiny like Dr. Mudok will say. However, your decisions are predicated upon the level of knowledge, the orientation you have at any given time. As powerful as that is, it is a risk because your growth is transitory. That means you can make a decision today using the level of orientation and knowledge you have today and only find out after 15 years that you did not make a superior decision. It means then you have to outsource a dimension of intelligence that is higher than your level of exposure or your orientation. Are we together now? It's amazing how that as you grow in leadership, as you grow in age, as you grow in life, as you grow, you know, in, in several kinds of responsibilities, your priorities change. Is that true? Your orientation changes and so on and so forth. I remember years ago, as children, there used to be this, this hairstyle called punk. My people remember? And if the Baba makes a mistake and ruins your one week by getting the measurement wrong and the styling wrong, you can, your one week can be ruined and frustrated because someone was not sensitive to the times. But it is amazing right now that as I sit down for them to bab me, usually I'm sleeping. It takes a lot of patience from the Baba because any opportunity to not do anything for 5-10 minutes is converted to sleep. Just bab whatever you need to bab and allow me prepare. I'm just saying that our priorities change as we rise, as we grow in leadership. Are we together now? You can see a woman of 60 years old walking and her shoe cut and she carries the one that is not working well and keeps walking. No embarrassment whatsoever. No explanation whatsoever. She will walk home with joy and confidence and say, Listen, look at what happened. I started trekking from here to this place. But let that happen to a young lady of 21, 22, 23. And that is an attack. She may even go for deliverance and say, no, it has to be the devil for this level of embarrassment. If you look back at your decisions now 10 15 years ago i am sure from the lens of your growth your maturity your increase in knowledge there are many things you probably would not have approached the way you did is that true that means that depending on the scope of your understanding now to make all of your decisions is a risk because growth is progressive it means in the next five to ten years the world is going to change and you do not know how far it will change your knowledge is going to grow and increase and you do not know how far what what level of ignorance you have now you only test how bad your ignorance is in the presence of superior knowledge are we learning already we are very very limited as men I know that we are an arrogant species and it's not very easy for us to admit these kinds of things. But I am telling you, based on the integrity of scripture, all men are limited. Jeremiah chapter 1, give us 11 and 12 please. Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12 is my verse of emphasis. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. That means a man can see wrongly. Is that true? To see means to perceive. For I will hasten my word to perform it, he says. In Luke chapter 11 from verse 34 and 35, Jesus was given a word of caution and he said, The light of the body is the eye. He said, Therefore when thine eye be single, thine whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. 35. He says, Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. That means you can carry darkness for decades believing it is light until you see the true light. Hallelujah. 
there is a desperate need for the leadings of God. Especially, you see, ladies and gentlemen, when you get to a point in your life where you now become a leader over others, when many people trust your intuition and they trust your leadership, perhaps you are a CEO of a company here, you are a man of God leading a ministry, you are a father, a mother, you are a leader of every, any kind of sort. It is a risk to take steps in today's world with assumptions because you see you will not only destroy yourself you will destroy maybe tens hundreds thousands of others who follow you with unbending loyalty it is a risk to lead people using just instincts alone this all of this this emotional expressions are useful but the reality of the times will require us to master the guidance and the leadings of the spirit Hallelujah. One of the things that defines a righteous man or, is, or a good man, as the Bible calls it, is the ability to have his steps ordered. Give us Psalms 37, please. 23 and 24. Psalms 37, 23 and 24. I pray this scripture for you in the name of Jesus. It says, the steps of a good man. The word good there in many other versions is a righteous man. The steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. Not just ordered by his brain, not just ordered by his age. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways. 24, it says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. The steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. Now you look at that against the scripture that says Proverbs 16.25. Proverbs 16.25. That there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Someone say seemeth right. One more time. Seemeth right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. You can see a path that looks like the path to victory, the path to glory, and you will religiously follow that path, only to find out that you've gotten yourself in trouble. I forbid that over your life in Jesus' name. Does the Bible give us the portrait of what a life looks like when it is under the influence of the leadership of God? Yes. Deuteronomy 32 from verse 10 to 13 this is a biblical portrait of how god leads men and what happens to a life and a destiny that submits to the guidance and the leadings of god deuteronomy 32 10 we are reading to 13. he found him in a desert land so notice where he found him in a desert land and the bible says and in the waste hauling wilderness the waste hauling wilderness he led him about, he instructed him, and kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on their wings. Verse 12, the Bible says, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. That means there was no plan B. It was not God and a charm. It was not God and somebody somewhere. The Lord alone led them. And the Bible says, as a result, he made him to ride on the high places. Where did he find him? In the desert and in the wilderness. And by the leadings of God. Look where this man has arrived at now. He made him to ride upon the high places of the earth. That he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Use your imagination for a moment and compare this man. The man who is in the wilderness, wallowing in confusion, maybe under curses and all kinds of things, versus a man right now hiding, riding on his high places experiencing increase in every dimension sucking honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock may that be you in jesus name you know believe me um i've been concerned especially over the last one week did you know that over 80 percent 
arguably of the emails and the text messages I receive is about people praying over financial conditions or some kind of conditions of stagnancy that is bringing pain, reproach and embarrassment to their families. I had to take it to God in prayer to say, Father, please, something needs to be done to the body of Christ. This level of stagnation, this level of incapacitation does not bring glory to the Lord. It's because we're a generation that have over-depended on brain work and just the intellect as against the simplicity and the childlikeness of the leadings of God. He took him from a desert and began to lead him. The leadings of God will always look like foolishness until you begin to see the glory that comes from his leadings. There are many of you right now, you can literally trace your lives and your destinies to the leadings of God. You can look at where you were as a man of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes um, I, I was talking to a gentleman not too long. And when he told me the wonderful things that were happening in his life now. And made reference to a few things I told him many years ago. I told him about the excellency of intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the ability to follow the leadings of God. And he was saying, Apostle, thank you. It didn't make sense then, but look what he's made out of my life now. You can know that you have submitted yourself to the leadings of God. Because please hear me, if it is the God of the Bible that leads you, I don't care what you meet on the way. The end of it will always be beauty and glory. God is speaking to someone because right now, you just know you are led of God. But Lord, where are we going? I do not know. Can I tell you, when God leads people, you can be sure he will take you from a desert. You see, when you are driving for over 98%, help that gentleman. For over 98% of the journey, you will not see your destination. But you need to trust the driver. For he leads you and guides you. To the city of above, He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. God is leading you. And for those of you who are not sure, pay attention so that you can verify whether it is God leading you or is a demon spirit leading you. Because there are many people who are obediently following demon spirits believing satan can appear as an angel of light and manipulate your sincerity there are many people today who believe it is god that is leading them but the results we are seeing do not carry the signature of god use tonight's teaching to verify so that you can switch loyalty in case you have submitted to a false voice hallelujah God leads men, but we need to understand what it takes and the dynamics of the leadings of God. What are the keys that we must engage if we want to be led of God and led by God? Tonight I will give us five, and please every time I call us to pray because we are going to be praying as I teach I want you to pray with all your heart if and when I request that you do so. It is true that God leads. But you see, God does not lead everybody. Unfortunately, He wants to lead everybody. Everybody, especially in Christ, can have access to the guidance and the leadings of God. But there are conditions that must be met. Otherwise, you can never truly enjoy the leadings of God. Are you ready? Write this down first in your heart before you pen it down on paper. Number one, the first key to enjoying the shepherdhood, the leadings of God, is admit that you are limited. Please write it down. The first key to enjoying and accessing God as your shepherd is to admit that you are limited. First Corinthians 13, 9. It says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. 
the key expression there is in part. We know in part. We prophesy in part. There are several overflows right now that includes outside and then tens of thousands of others who are following by way of television, the internet. But then I am only limited as far as my sight is concerned to this auditorium. I would be mistaken to believe that all that I'm talking to here are the only people who are following and participating. You must admit that you are limited. Hallelujah. This is where the pride of man comes in. Because you see, it is a very embarrassing and uncomfortable state for man, especially the educated man, to come to a point where you admit that in spite of your intellectual prowess, in spite of your level of exposure and orientation, you are still limited. We pride in all kinds of things. I've traveled to Europe. I've traveled to America. I have a PhD and that is wonderful. I am a professional in this aspect. I am this and that. I have read these books. And we, we believe that because of all of those things, Psalm 25 and verse 9, Psalm 25 and verse 9, the Bible says the meek, someone say the meek, the meek, the description of a kind of person, the meek, the Bible says, will he guide in judgment, not the needy, not the one who is in need of guidance, the meek, you know what it means to be meek? Meekness is a, is a spiritual quality, it's a state of brokenness where you understand that I am limited. Another word for meekness is teachability. Hallelujah. The ability to be teachable. Lord, I thank you for that which you have given me, but I admit I do not know everything. Please give us that scripture again. The meek will he guide in judgment and he says the meek will he teach his ways so could it be that the reason why many people are unable to access the leadings of god and the ways of god is because there is a desire to know but there is no meekness admit that you are limited as a man of god admit that you are limited as a businessman, admit that you are limited. Admittance is such a difficult thing for us, especially in our civilization today, because psychologically for many of us, we translate admitting limitations to mean that we are mediocre, to mean that we are not much. So everybody likes to give, um, a, give an attitude of invincibility to the degree to which you give a... A picture of a superman that seems to be the degree to which a generation will listen to you and be loyal to you unfortunately as far as destiny is concerned that is absolute nonsense Jesus who was the word incarnate as soon as he arrived by age 12 with no sense of shame and embarrassment he marched straight to the temple to go and learn you would think this was the person that the scripture was all about Imagine Jesus sitting in the temple and listening to them. This was the word of God bound in earthly flesh. I can imagine the doctors of the law saying, do you understand this young man? And he says, yes, sir. The meek will he guide. For someone here, God is already speaking to you. The reason why you have not been able to make progress is pride. The inability to come before the Lord and say, Father, I do not know much. Would you teach me? What's that song? Spirit, lead me where my trust. Help me. Let me walk of God. You must admit that you are limited. Father, thank you. 
in spite of the Bible school, in spite of the seminary, in spite of all the books that I've read, I, I come before you expressing my ignorance and my limitations. Except you lead me, I cannot lead these great people. You see why the request of Solomon touched the heart of God. How do you come to a man in the night and now give him an open check? Solomon would have said, there, there are five kings that have threatened me. Oh God, kill them for me. Give me rest. Solomon said, I am but a young man. I do not have the ability to lead these so great a people. Would you grant unto your servant an understanding heart? And the Bible says, God was impressed. He was touched. For someone here, if you will only humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, even now, the remaining days of this year, what God will do in your life will dwarf many years put together. The meek will he guide. There are many proud men of God. There are many proud business people. There are many people failing woefully and yet they will not listen and open up their heart to see the need to be guided. There are people who are poor and broke and they will not listen. The moment you want to talk about money, they want to contribute as colleagues. You are not getting it. It's not working in your life. There are people who are not doing well in ministry. As a principle, any area I don't have so much result, I'm usually silent. I don't, I don't, I only speak from the abundance of knowledge with results. Our world today is full of commentators, commentators without results. When you know how football is, and so much just pass now, the person who is talking now has not been able to achieve anything, and yet he's insulting someone whose weekly payment is his lifetime desire. Are we together now? You must admit. Someone is having a small business, for instance. Maybe you, you are just selling two or three items and only five people come to buy it. And now you are giving all kinds of... I think ShopRite can do like this. I think this one can... These people, they are not really very wise if it was me. And yet you have your own result there and absolutely nothing is working. Can I tell you, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anything that represents pride, eating up your potential for rising to a, the next level, I curse it from your life right now. The meek will he guide in judgment. There are people who don't know anything about marriage. Yet they are the first to comment on everything. They are the first to give lectures and give all kinds of orientation. There are people who don't know anything about finances and favor. There is zero manifestation of favor. Not one, not two, zero. And yet they can say anything about favor. There are people who don't know jack about the anointing. And yet they will want to teach you dimensions and dynamics. And those who are really anointed are just hearing. And watching the gap in knowledge. Garnish with pride. Is God helping someone? You must admit that you are limited. That is not negative confession. It is not demeaning what God has done in your life. With brokenness, there is something I do not know. Lord, guide me. The meek will he guide. The moment I've taught you this, when God finds humility and finds brokenness, something there has to be something about this my financial situation i have done my best your best does not mean that is all to be done it is just the best you know based on your knowledge do you know let me tell you ignorance and pride can make simple things so difficult so difficult Apostle, I can drive. Okay, let someone who can drive help you. No, no, no. I've been driving for a long time. It's just I've not had the opportunity to go to the road. Just give me the car. You come back with two headlamps, Paul say it was just a slight mistake. You cannot, you are not getting this thing. It's as simple as that. Apostle, I can cook. Three hours, you are still roaming around in the kitchen. Nothing is done. Nothing is set. You are not even sure again of what you are doing. 
It was just a mistake. I think the stove or the the our standard of knowledge in this ministry is mastery. Until you are there, you are not yet there. Don't say I know to what degree. Are we together now? Yes. Admit that you are limited as a man of God. Spirit of the living God, I cry for your wisdom. I admit I do not know. I am limited. I can learn. I can do this, but I am limited. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Humility. Number two, very quickly. Is someone learning? What is the second key to accessing the leadings and the guidance of God? Pray earnestly for divine direction. Pray earnestly for divine direction. Listen, when it has to do with direction, it is a risk to assume. The devil can open a door for you that you will think it is God. I've taught you even the prison has a door. Before you enter the prison, a door must be open. So just because a door is open, you need to verify where that door is going. There are some doors that are going into prison. Pray earnestly for divine direction. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. First Samuel 30 and verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? I hope you know the man who is speaking was a warrior. Already had the arsenals to bring victory. But he said, no assumption. Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover. It is powerful when you are running with a sure word. You don't see challenges on your way, because you know that God... Listen, it is vain it, to wake up in the morning, is that in your Bible, and to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Just because you have money does not mean you should start business. No, the presence of capital is not a green light to start. No. We make all kinds of flimsy mistakes and we keep repeating it. That's why God has sent you to the house of God. Can I tell you, when you are physically prepared, you stand the risk of making more mistakes. Because all the factors are there. Chances are excellent, you will not respect the excellency of his voice. Shall I pursue shall i overtake and the lord says since you paid attention to my leadings go ahead and pursue you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all you must pray earnestly for divine direction and there are two ways you hear from god in prayer write it down please number one through the light from scripture so that will be two a light from scripture this is the first way God speaks to men in the place of prayer. Psalm 119, I believe verse 105. Please give it to us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So God speaks to you by giving you light from scripture. Is someone learning now? Light from scripture. In the place of prayer, serious prayer, not prayer and browsing. Not prayer and watching movie. You are just watching the parts you don't like. You quickly pray while you are awake. No, no. I mean heartfelt prayer. When your spirit man is attuned, pay attention to the scriptures that come. Sometimes they can be scriptures ordinarily you would not have remembered. You see that? But it just jumps up from the spirit. It's a time to write it down. What could God be saying? God speaks to us when we pray through the light that comes from scripture and then number two he speaks to us through the voice of his spirit isaiah 30 21 i hope you know god speaks to men yes he does and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left 
you shall hear a voice in john 16 and verse 13 please give us john 16 and verse 13 jesus was teaching and he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak so the holy spirit speaks he speaks he guides the bible says the, the spirit speaketh expressly pay attention to the speakings of god when you pray most times when you hear god and is not in the place of prayer the margin of error is very very wide let me tell you because you see the 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 haziness that comes from the daily activities chances are excellent that what you thought you heard may not have been god so number one the first key to accessing the leadings of god is you must admit that you are limited and in need of his leadership number two you must pray earnestly for divine direction number three you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters one of the ways that god leads men is by granting them access to supernatural encounters please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions look up ladies and gentlemen can i tell you this i don't know what has happened to your dreams and visions but tonight in the name of jesus let there be a correction of it there are certain heights that when you get to and your dreams and visions have not been purified you will destroy yourself and destroy others dreams are powerful prophetic channels that communicate the leadings of god otherwise satan would not be interested in your dreams i can tell you he knows what is contained in dreams and visions genesis 41 let's read the first seven verses genesis chapter 41 please and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river reading to seven and behold there came up out of the river seven well favored kind and fat flesh and they fed in the middle uh -huh. verse 3 and behold seven other kind came up after them out of the river ill favored and lean fleshed and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river pharaoh is dreaming now and the ill favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored one and pharaoh awoke he slept again and he dreamed the second time i hope you know this was a revelation of something that had a national economic implication so why would god choose to reveal something that had that gravity i mean a whole nation could be wiped in famine and god chose dreams respect dreams are we together he dreamt the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up on one stalk rank and good six and behold seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them final verse now it says and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream there are many things that we have called dreams but they are prophetic blueprints for the next two three four five ten years of our lives sometimes warnings sometimes green lights but because we have not been able to discern next year i have a series on prophetic experiences dreams visions angelic encounters i want to teach you this thing so that you will understand 
you have to be able to understand the place of dreams, visions, and even prophetic experiences. If you're learning, say Amen. amen. In Exodus chapter 3, give us from verse 2 to 5. Exodus 3, 2 to 5. Watch this now. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the him being Moses now, in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. It says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4 now. It says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Verse 5. It says, Draw, nigh, draw not nigh here. Put off thy shoes, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So he used a vision, a prophetic experience. Remember, that was the one encounter that turned a murderer to become a deliverer. Many have ignored supernatural encounters. In 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4, this was the encounter of Solomon now. Always inspires me every time I read this. The king went to Gibeon, the Bible says, and sacrificed there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. Verse 5, it says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How? So God can appear to men through dreams. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, in the dream, God is asking him in a dream. He is replying in a dream. Imagine if you were Solomon's wife. You went to bed, honey see you in the morning, and while you are sleeping, turning east and west, and all the things people do when they are sleeping, you know, people can turn literally 180 degrees while they are sleeping and not even be aware. They just get up and know that the pillow is... People sleep in all kinds of interesting ways. While all that drama is happening, a man is encountering the God of the Bible in a very destiny-defining way. The wisdom that he would wake up with would be what would distinguish him as the wisest man that ever lived. And yet God chose a dream. Thou hast shown unto your servant great kindness and all of that and all of that. And he asked him for several things. Let's go to verse 13 for sake of time. Let's just do 13 to 16 and then we'll end. He answered him and said, Because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, I have given you understanding like no other person has got. And then he says, And I have also given thee, 13 now, that which thou hast not asked, both riches in the dream now. How do you give riches in a dream? How do you give honor in a dream? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all your days. 14. It says, And if thou wilt walk in my way, still in the dream, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Long life, still in the dream. Last verse, please. Of verse 15 now. And Solomon awoke. So it was a dream. And behold, again the Bible says, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. That means he said, let's dance and rejoice. And the people say, wow, the king is in a good mood. Not knowing that a transaction has happened in a dream. Could it be that throughout this year, God has been trying to transact realities with men? It is not only when you come to church like this, ladies and gentlemen. Every time you go to sleep, see it as an opportunity to step into a realm where destinies are defined. Because you do not know these demons are also waiting with your package. It's like a menu. Fear, intimidation, and the moment you lay your head, there you are in secondary school. Writing a demonic exam that you never pass or that never finishes. And if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice, going through those wicked experiences, seeing yourself in a former house, writing exams that never finish, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare you are delivered right now. Only Yeshua 
will reign forever. To His kingdom there'll be no end. In my life, only Yeshua will reign forever. We can access the leadings of God when we are open to supernatural encounters. This one disturbed me seriously because it concerned Jesus himself. I hope you know that when Jesus was born, he could die. I hope you know that. Matthew 2 from verse 13. The Bible says, And when they were departed, the Magi now, Remember, the Magi came to just pay homage to Jesus. Little baby Jesus now. Baby Jesus could die. If he could not die, God would not ask that they run away with him. So don't just say Jesus saved sinners. He had to be alive to be able to save sinners. He was going to die. But if he died as a baby, your sins would not be saved. That would just be obituary, not salvation. And when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. How? In a dream again. Saying, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Look at the exact, look at the, the details. Arise, take the child and he told him where to go to. He would have said, arise and run away. What if he ran to report to Herod? Herod would say, you are welcome. There's a room here for you. Both you and the child, wait there. It's not enough to say, God told me to move. To where? He, he, he spoke to him. He said, arise and flee into Egypt. Then here now, he says, and be thou there until I come to you again with a word. My God, may God restore the accuracy of his leadings. May God restore the accuracy of his leadings in the name of Jesus Christ. A man goes to bed. Joseph was a weak, ordinary man. He would have died. Jesus would have died. And the entire plan of redemption would have been aborted. When you see the excellency of their parenting, it was not because they were superior parents. They didn't go through parents' counseling. They only knew how to hear. Maybe God is speaking to a family here. Your ability to hear concerning your children will really be the key to their rising. Thank God for all the intellectual systems that help to feed your mind. But nothing will replace the accuracy of the hearing of you. You can give birth to a child and God comes to you and says, This child is ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Take him to a missionary school in Lagos or in Abuja. You have heard the word. No matter what confusion comes, you will say, I know God said this. Remain there until I bring you word. And he told him why. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Next verse. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by the night and departed how do you get up from a dream and do exactly what you saw the kind of dreams we're having now if you do everything in your dream you would have been dead by now because our dreams are so weak and not purified by the power of god you dream and you see yourself killing your mother if you get up and do the same thing would she die you you see how satan has hijacked our dreams because of insensitivity may there be restoration this night You may say, okay, apostle, I'm not inclined towards the prophetic. I may not have the hearing eye and the seeing ear, but a dream is a blessing that God gave every man. All you need to do is to sleep. Please help them. Give us that scripture. Let's finish it, please. Now, verse 15. The Bible says, and he was there as he was directed by the dream until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet that out of Egypt I have called my son supernatural experiences I shared with you my encounters when 
in 2013 i think it was preparing and hoping just trying to see if it was possible to come down to abuja and the word of the lord just came with a very serious encounter a plane that lifted from zaria it was written e and i on his way to abuja just when it was about to land it crashed that one the dream was straightforward are we together it was the reason why in 2018 when the lord came to me and began to speak to me about moving to abuja it took me three years i struggled with the voice of god verifications upon verifications because destinies will be part of that decision there are decisions you don't make carelessly except you are selfish hallelujah there are people who just get up and say i feel like leaving my job what happens to your five children how do you feel like leaving your job i feel like driving my wife i feel like having three more children you see we 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 don't listen to god and you find out that the three more children you have are the ones that give you headache because god said stop you didn't hear are we together it's an uncomfortable message tonight but open up your heart to listen please open up your heart to listen because we are going to pray tonight and one of the prayer points will be purify my experiences so that there are no confusions every access that the devil has to my dreams and my visions because i don't have time i'm not teaching on this i'm just teaching it as a byproduct of the leadership of the spirit otherwise i would have told you there is something called lying visions many today are sincere victims of this a combination of your emotions and an advantage that demons have taken and many people are being manipulated today it is maritally financially there are people in all kinds of confusions this is why we need to understand the accuracy and the leadings of god there are lying spirits that spoke to people in dreams your father is about to die that company is yours and the boy just sits down is waiting every day i know what i had there are people today you see by reason of what i do i am amazed at the things people do and the confidence they have they tell you that god spoke to me and when you vet them you will truly know they had from the spirit except that by judging from the lens of scripture it was something else but as far as their conviction is concerned they had the right to be that convicted because of the clarity of what came to them. But when you judge it from the lens of scripture, it was not God. Please listen carefully. And you can be a prophet and still be in error. Just follow me. I'm a good pilot. We're flying high, but we'll land safe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural encounters. I know somebody that I once prayed and ministered deliverance to, a lady. This lady got up and started running out of the house, going to some river, and you know, and she said, voices speak. Do you know how many people have committed suicide today? And they will tell you a voice said, kill yourself, kill your wife. No, you judge the speakings of God against the integrity of scripture. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have not opened up your heart to the realm of dreams and visions there is a dimension of the leadings of god that you may be robbing yourself of and we are going to pray tonight some of you do not have access to dreams it's the blessing and a privilege to all the saints in christ and some of you our dreams have been corrupted all kinds of spirits have manipulated our dreams we lie down and we get up and have all kinds of leadings we follow those leadings sincerely but the end result shows that it was not god is someone learning we believe you have been greatly blessed by this message please show kindness by liking commenting and sharing this message to your social media handles so that others can also benefit god bless you see you again soon